Right now we're giving the bull kelp a little haircut um, so that way they can keep tumbling really nicely. For marine biologists Julieta Gomez and Rachel Karm, weekly haircuts are just part of caring for lab-nurtured kelp specimens that will soon be part of a critical mission. To help restore a once thriving natural population that's been decimated along the Sonoma County coastline. The damage began roughly a decade ago with a shift in the marine environment that killed off local predators like the sunflower sea star. That triggered a population explosion in another competing species, ravenous purple sea urchins, which feed on the kelp. So kelp loss has been a devastating issue along the northern California coastline. The scale of loss is incredible. It's over 90% since 2014. Rietta Homan is leading a cutting-edge kelp restoration project for the Greater Farallons Association and the Greater Farallons National Marine Sanctuary. Working with the UC Davis Marine Lab at Bodega Bay, the group is growing their own colonies, which they hope to reintroduce to the shoreline. Enlisting the help of local divers to literally pluck the urchins and plant the kelp. We work with local uh, commercial urchin divers to remove urchins, um, purple urchins in particular, uh, to reduce the grazing pressure on new kelp forest growth. They say plucking the destructive urchins is pretty straightforward, but figuring out what to do with them, well, that's a work in progress. Yeah, just by looking at this group, you can see that they're all nearly identical in color. Partner groups are experimenting with ideas like turning them into fertilizer or plumping them up for potential sale to local restaurants. And then we are also going to be outplanting um, in these areas using a couple of different methods. But seeding a new kelp forest presents far different challenges. In rows of barrel tanks, the team is growing tiny kelp spores on long strands of twine that can be sunk in place with weights. Rows of lights mimic cycles of night and day as the team monitors their progress under the microscope. About every week, we'll come and check under the microscope slides and make sure they're growing how we expect them to. Other strategies call for divers to plant bags filled with kelp spores or even glue small kelp platforms directly to the underwater reef. While no one's sure which strategy will be the most successful, anticipation is building with work expected to begin a little later this summer. And we get to be out there diving at these sites, doing this incredible work, seeing these sites recover, cross our fingers, knock on wood, um, and really forging a path forward that we hope will be able to be used both regionally and across the globe. And for the Greater Farallons National Marine Sanctuary, it's a chance to restore an ecosystem that is critical for supporting sea life from abalone to rockfish and beyond.